It's quite late at night now. I'm by myself with a bottle of Dr. Pepper, and I think I'm going to do my Larry King routine here. <laughs> Keeping in line with tonight's topic, on a related subject, I'd like to add a personal opinion of which you are entitled. We were talking about war, its causes, and possibly its prevention, but we also need to speak more about what it is to be human. And it might help to ask a simple but difficult to answer question. What are we? Really? What are human beings? We call ourselves human beings, but where did we get that? Well, we got it from ourselves. There was no other source that we know of. Maybe there's a creator out there somewhere that we don't know anything about who says that maybe your real name is a schmuchlich, but that doesn't sound very good. We seem to be indigenous to planet Earth. It's possible we came from somewhere else, like Mars, for example. Some theorists say we may have been seeded by a meteor that was blasted off the surface of Mars by an asteroid collision. There's even an idea that we actually are Martians, the progeny of those who escaped Mars before that planet died. But what's in a name? Want to hear something that will blow your mind? Oh. Check this out. <clears throat> I'm going to quote a scientist. Age estimates are obtained by observing differences between the DNA of different individuals and are calculated using estimates of mutation rates. Mitochondrial DNA is often used for this. It is separate from the bulk of the human DNA, which is found in the cell nucleus. Mitochondrial DNA has about 16,000 base pairs and mutates, apparently, much faster than the nuclear DNA. Human mitochondrial DNA has been completely mapped, and all of the coding regions are known, and the proteins, or RNA, for which they code. Some of the mitochondrial DNA does not code for anything and is known as a control region. This region appears to mutate faster than any other region because the variation among humans is greatest here. Well, <laughs> that throws me for a loop. But most of all, I have no idea what it means, but it sounds impressive. And it seems to give us a suggestion of how old we are or at least a means of finding out. Actually, we don't really know how long we've existed. Some have evidence that suggests we've been here for 333,000 years. Others say we've been here for 2.8 million years. Wow! You want to know what I think? Probably not, but here goes. I think we've been here for 500 million years. That's about the time life came out of the sea. Let's say that we can trace the earliest human being back to its origin. The question is then, where did that come from? I don't really think we just popped into existence. We had to have evolved from something. DNA suggests we evolved from chimpanzees because 99% of our DNA matches them exactly. Okay, I'm cool with that. But where did chimps come from? Obviously, they came from something, and that something came from something else, and so on and so on. And maybe our earliest ancestor was a microorganism. By the way, the objection that we evolved from simians is stated as this. If we evolved from apes, why do we still have apes? Well, the theory is that we branched off somehow, leaving the rest of them to evolve on their own, or to go off in whatever direction some of them went. But how important is all of that? Actually, I don't think it matters. What matters is the here and now. Regardless of where we came from, in the vast cosmic scheme of things, we are something. So how do we find out who we are? A thought. Maybe if we really, really, truly pay attention to ourselves, we might find out, or at least something about it. Mark Twain thought about it. He suggested, not too delicately, that if anyone wants to understand the human race, one need look no further than himself, for within each one of us rests all of the passions, perceptions, loves, hates, ambitions of everyone else, all the way back to, and he says, Adam. Twain looked at our follies. But we should look at our nature without judgments. 
Suppose for a brief moment that we have no moral codes, no religious edicts, no concept of right or wrong or what's polite or impolite. Suppose we simply look at what we feel about everything and anything without assigning a value to it. What would we find? We want to be happy. We want to love, we want to breathe, eat, drink, sleep, procreate, make things, laugh, find the awe in the universe around us. We want to ponder and think and speculate. Need I go on? I don't think so. So given all of that, what does it look like? What are we? How different are we, really, from a squirrel or a dog or a horse or a bird? We all share similar DNA. We even share DNA with plants, trees. Look at how we're constructed physically. When you get right down to it, we have the same skeleton as a cow or a kangaroo or your poodle. We have a spine with a skull on top of it, four limbs, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth in roughly the same order. Have you ever seen a creature with its eyes beneath its mouth or its nose above the eyes? Maybe you have. If so, I'd really like to see it. So maybe it isn't all that complicated or mysterious. Maybe we're just another species on this planet no better than birds, reptiles, or other endothermic mammals. It kind of feels weird that we have basically the same skeletal structure as a mouse. But what's wrong with mice? Nature selected them to exist, didn't it? So they can't be all that bad. It's been said that humans are smarter than any other life form on this planet. <laughs> really? How do we measure intelligence? By how much we know or how many puzzles we can solve? Some have come to believe that intelligence is relative, that it depends upon the species. A cat, for instance, is intelligent in cat terms. Can you leap off of a roof head first and catch a bird in your mouth on the way down, then land safely on your front feet? In our case, arms. In that regard, we're not as smart as cats. Maybe what we need to discover what we really are is a small dollop of humility. We're clever, yes. We can make all kinds of things from awe-inspiring cathedrals to breathtaking symphonies, from marvelous machines of transportation to what may very well become self-aware computers. But does that make us smart? If we're so damn smart, then why can't we figure out a way to stop war? Killing each other benefits no one. So why do we keep doing it? Maybe we're just not smart enough yet. Maybe we need to evolve a little more until war no longer matters. And I think that's where mindfulness comes in. We want to be mindful, not mindless. We want to be mindful of our primal nature. That may be one of the constituents of our evolution. In the meantime, with humility and deep honesty, we might find some evidence of who we really are, especially if we're mindful of the things we do and the way we feel. And now, one final thought. What if... What if we were to discover, in a way that couldn't be refuted, that our actual true nature as a species is that we're really angels? Not, after all, that we are wretched sinners, but angels sent to this planet to work things out in a setting in which things could not otherwise be worked out. How would that impact upon our self-images? Would there be a possibility that, knowing we are angels, and knowing that angels are defined as divine and of pure love, we might act accordingly? Isn't our behavior tailor-made to reflect what we believe of ourselves? Maybe we should just pretend this is true. Couldn't hurt. I'm Dave Holman of KPIP Radio Fayette, and you're entitled to my opinion. Let's hear yours. Mm -hmm.